Hello, on behalf of Alpha Omega team, I would like to take a few minutes to explain how you can set up a very simple static structural analysis model. For that reason, let's go ahead and launch ANSYS Workbench. Once your ANSYS Workbench open, based on the availability on the license that you're going to see on the left side of your Workbench, you can choose what type of analysis you can do on your computer. So since in this video I'm going to set up a static structural analysis, I'm going to simply select static structural from the left column and drag it to create a standalone system. Each model for setting up, we need to go through steps to make sure our model is complete and our results are reliable. The first thing for our model we need is a geometry. Once we have the geometry, we can go ahead and assign some material to our model. After that, of course, based on the nature of the behavior of our model, we can go ahead and apply load and boundary conditions and eventually mesh our geometry and run the analysis. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and import the geometry. What you need to do is simply right click on your geometry just say import geometry, browse. I'm going to go ahead and go to the directory that I have my geometry. It's a step file, it's a valve body. I'm going to open it. And you see there is a green check mark here that means that my geometry is defined. Engineering data has different materials, and you can use based on the material that you have yourself or you want to customize it or if you are using ANSYS Grantop product which has lots of different verified materials in it you can go ahead and select whatever material that you want and apply it to your geometry. But I'm going to go ahead and open Mechanical from Workbench and apply my material to the geometry that I have at Workbench. So for that, what you need to do is you can come to Model, right click on Model, and click on Edit. What would happen is ANSYS Workbench will automatically open ANSYS Mechanical for me with my geometry in it. Here is the valve body that I have. For rotating your model, you can simply use your middle mouse click button. For moving your geometry, simply hold control on your keyboard and use the middle click for moving your geometry. And wherever in this environment that you click with your middle click, it is going to create the center of that rotation for you, which is appearing like a red sphere. Now, on the left side, you can see the model tree. As you can see, my geometry has a small green check mark on the left side of it, which means that my geometry is there and is defined. Now, I'm going to go ahead and assign a material to my geometry. Once you click on your geometry, you can see down here the material is already assigned, structural steel. You can of course go ahead and change it to the material that you're interested or you have availability here. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to click on materials and see the detail and the behavior of the material that is already in my model. You can see Young modulus, portion ratio, bulk modulus, 
and shear modulus and other properties are available for this material. Of course, you can go ahead and customize any of the available materials that are in ANSYS Workbench as well. For this problem, I'm just going to go ahead and use the same material that is already in my model. Now, for my analysis, what I need to do is I need to define a boundary condition and load and mesh my model and run the simulation. For that sake, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on static structural, insert, I'm going to apply a force, it is asking for a geometry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the top part of my valve and I'm going to apply a force and it is asking for a magnitude in Newton. So here I'm going to apply a hundred Newton force on top of my valve. As you can see, since it is positive, it is in tension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the direction of this force and put minus 100 so I can have a compressive force on my valve. Now, I am going to define an internal pressure and I'm going to define a boundary condition for this geometry. For that, I'm going to right click on static structural, insert, I can come and click on pressure. So I need a geometry for this pressure to be applied. I'm going to click on one surface. I'm going to go to extend and I'm going to click on limits. So what would happen is it will automatically continue this pressure all the way to the surfaces that are aligned within a tolerance of the selected surface. But as you can see, not all the surfaces are selected inside my valve. So what I'm going to do is I am going to create a section and then make sure that I have defined all the internal surfaces to apply my pressure. For that reason, I'm going to cancel. I'm going to keep the pressure here, but I'm going to home section plane and I'm going to click on Y. And now I'm going to create my section plane. For that, you need to use your left click, hold it, drag the line, and you can see a cross section of the model. Now, what I need to do is I'm going to get back to pressure. And I'm going to back to details. I need a geometry. I need a surface. So I'm going to click on surface. And I'm going to say limits. Again, I'm going to hold the control on my keyboard and select the other surface, limits, and of course, this surface. Now, I'm going to hit apply button here. And now the pressure, I'm going to assume, assume there is a 20 megapascal pressure applied inside of my valve. Now, what I need to define on my model is a boundary condition. Every static structural analysis need the model to be fixed. What I need to do for that now is I'm going to right click on static structural, insert, 
and I'm going to apply a fixed support on the left side of my model. And I'm going to hit apply. And as you can see, we have a name tag, fixed support on this left side. Now, what I need to do is I need to generate a mesh and then solve my model. But ANSYS made it simple, and we don't need to specifically go ahead and generate mesh on our geometry. We can go ahead and hit solve, and ANSYS will automatically mesh our model, and it will solve the analysis. Of course, it is not going to be the best mesh, and we need to make it finer and better for our analysis, but for simplicity, we just go ahead and run our analysis. So as you can see, my solution is complete, and I'm for seeing some results, I'm going to right-click on Solution, Deformation, and I'm going to click on Total, and then Evaluate our results. You can see here that I have the total deformation contour in my model. Is this result reliable? Of course, because of the size of the elements that we have in this model, our results may not be super accurate. But what we can do is we can make our mesh finer, especially in the local areas of interest and get more reliable and better results. In future videos, I will explain how you can locally make your mesh finer and how you can validate your results. Thank you very much for paying attention to this video. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for further training. Have a good day.